what am I gonna do? Sit in front of the camera and tell everyone I failed? Yeah, I'm sitting in front of the camera and I'm telling you all, I already failed my first week of writing goals. Hey everybody, my name is Michaela, but you can call me Mick and welcome back to my channel. So I'm officially back home for a while. <laughs> I was on a two week honeymoon, which was amazing, but also exhausting. And then I went basically straight into a long weekend with a ton of friends and family where 12 people stayed at my house. And then we did a float trip where we paddled down a river and camped on islands. I'm exhausted this week to say the least. So this is week one out of nine where I'm going to try to write my full first zero draft in nine weeks. And I'm glad I gave myself nine instead of eight because I have to be honest, this week was a bit of a wash, you guys. So I'm trying to write my zero draft and my goal just to get it done as fast as possible is to write 2,000 words a day until I hit that 120,000 word mark, which is around what I think I'll end up at. I could underwrite and I could end up overwriting, but that is my goal. Minimum 2,000 words a day. And if I did that, it would be nine weeks. I did not write 2,000 words a day every day this week. And I instantly started to panic thinking that I failed not just myself, but also all of you. But I'm going to choose to give myself some grace and just talk about it with you guys. Like I, this week was just so draining. I was like recovering from those three weeks of travel and then basically five days of like nonstop interaction with people. <laughs> I used to be like the biggest extrovert. I used to be the person where like you could throw me in a room and I'd become friends with everybody. But as I've gotten older, really post 2020, I have just become way more introverted just in the sense that like I need to recharge my batteries after social interaction. The only person who does not drain my social battery is my husband. Thank God, because we hang out all the time. I was kind of starting to panic because I was like, I have to film an update on Friday, which I'm doing. This is Friday morning. I'm gonna do a quick turnaround edit and get it out to you guys by Friday afternoon. But I was like, I have committed to doing this and what am I gonna do? Sit in front of the camera and tell everyone I failed? Yeah, I'm sitting in front of the camera and I'm telling you all, I already failed my first week of writing goals. Ari's Pages actually just put out a video about her NaNoWriMo journey that I really loved watching because she talked about hard writing versus soft writing. And I just, that really resonated with me. I feel like for so long, I've been doing a lot of soft writing in my life, writing whenever I feel like it, writing whenever the inspiration strikes. And this is the first time in a long time that I am doing a hard writing, like a true writing routine. And it's okay. I'm going to fumble a little bit in the beginning. It's, it's okay. It's new. I'm learning a new habit. And I was recovering from some exhausting stuff. There's a bird right there. Oh my God. I really wish I could have gotten that on camera and I really wish that my cat was right here to see that. I filmed right in front of my window and there was just, he was right there, he was right there. This is also how I know I'm getting older because I've really been liking birds lately. Like I love to watch birds fly around. Like, do I, am I okay? So my goals for the zero draft was I'm going to write 2000 words a day. So since it is Friday, July 12th, and I started on Monday, July 8th, I should have had 
10,000 words by now. So my goal was 10,000 words and where I've ended up is I wrote 4,000. Yeah, everyone cheered for me, I wrote for two days. So I didn't hit my goal, but it's okay. I'm going to next week and it doesn't throw off my entire progress. Like I'm just starting out. I'm just rebuilding this habit of writing every day and it's a lot of words every day and that's okay. And I'm going to do it, I'm gonna persevere. We're gonna get there. Well, I'm still at the beginning of my novel. Not always do I actually write linearly, but I'm going to be doing that for this project. And so I've already written before this, the prologue and chapter one. So I was really just finishing up chapter one and writing chapter two this week. Some struggles that I faced outside of what I just talked about of just like trying to get into the mode to write while also recovering and doing like everyday life things. That was definitely a struggle and I'm hoping to fix that next week for sure. But in terms of any writing struggles that I had, what's hilarious to me is I actually started finishing up chapter one and going into chapter two and I immediately wanted to change the entire beginning of the book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know who you are out there who does the exact same thing. Well, I did it. I instantly did it. I was like, actually, I think this prologue needs to be at the end of book one. <laughs> Sorry, I can only laugh because it's actually crazy. It's crazy. I spent so long outlining for the first time ever, like a chapter by chapter outline, getting so excited for this book and I instantly changed it, but I'm not actually going to change it right now. I just need to write this book. If I get stuck rewriting the prologue and then I hate it again and then I have to rewrite something or re-add it, like I'm gonna be stuck in act one forever, forever, which is what I've done in a lot of writing projects. And I'll get stuck in this mindset where as I write, I'm editing and that's not how to write your first draft. That's not what I should be doing. Like I will be doing this forever if I'm fine tuning and editing as I'm writing. Instead, so in Scrivener, I've been using the notes feature a lot. And I think this is what I'm gonna do for the whole of the zero draft. I'm just writing my thoughts as I also write it. I'm not editing, I'm not changing a thing. We're not deleting anything, we're not deleting words, we're keeping every single word we've ever written for this project but I am going to be writing all my thoughts. Like, I hate this. <laughs> and actually, I think it belongs at the end of book one and here's how I want the new prologue to start. Like, that's what I'm doing. So then when I go back to edit, I'm reminding myself where I already think I need to do changes and then I can change it if I see fit. But I'm not going to make the changes yet. Oh, oh, I also, I totally forgot. I also changed the entire dynamic of my main characters. Yep. Yep, that happened. So I am going to be writing it in that new dynamic, I think. As soon as I started writing, I instantly started getting different ideas than my outline, and that's okay. Some I am taking, and some I am waiting until the first redraft. So what have I done well this week with writing? Um, what have I done well? I think this is gonna be the hardest question for me to answer. I guess just going off of the last struggle, I'm proud of myself for not instantly writing the new prologue and ruining my momentum. Like, and also just with how little I wrote this week, I'm proud of myself for now at Friday having a positive mindset and not giving into like an imposter syndrome doom spiral, which I do a lot. So I'm proud of myself for, I wrote what I could this week, I'm gonna do better next week, and I'm not going to get stuck in this editing while writing phase. And that's progress, baby. We have the prologue done, we have chapter one and chapter two done in this first week but I wrote the prologue in chapter one pretty much 
beforehand on some like live writing sprints with Cody and Becca. But I'm feeling overall pretty good about it. What's so interesting is I haven't written something in a very, very long time. And I feel like I'm refinding my voice a bit. So that has been something interesting that I'm, that I'm realizing. Like, I feel like my writing style has changed because I'm a lot older now and I've read a lot more and I've been studying craft for so long now that my writing style has changed a bit. So I'm trying to kind of figure out what that is and how I sound on paper. But even though I did not write too much this week, I thought it would be a good time to buddy up my questions that you guys asked uh, to celebrate me hitting 2,000 subscribers, which is still so exciting to me. Like, thank you guys. I'm so appreciative of every single one of you. And I see all of you people who like keep commenting on all my videos. It just, it makes me smile. It makes me so happy. So thank you so much for engaging with my content. That is, it's truly been motivating for this writing journey, which is why I was really scared to film this update. Cause I was like, I'm letting, I feel like I'm letting myself down, but I feel like I'm letting you guys down as well. But I'm just excited to see where this goes. Cause for the first time in a very long time, I feel like I can accomplish a creative project and I don't know. I want to get emotional on camera, but that is really exciting. Let's answer some questions. If you don't know, like I say in every video, my name's Michaela, but you, like all my friends call me, can call me Mick, and I am 29 years old. Your girl is pushing 30, and that's okay. I used to be very scared about turning 30. I also think when I was a lot younger, I thought like 25 was super old, and it is so not. It is so not. So if you're in your mid-20s, live your life, live your life. You are so not old. I don't even think that I'm old at 29. Like I'm just excited for this new decade. And where am I in the world? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, which I know we are the butt of like every joke all the time. Like in the U S everyone makes fun of Ohio and everyone makes fun of Cleveland, but I will not accept any Cleveland slander on my channel because I love this city. I think this is always such a fun question to ask any writer. I probably have a pretty basic writer's answer. I cannot, I truly cannot remember a time when I didn't consider myself a writer. I was basically raised by my parents, yes, but also my grandmother who lived only a couple blocks away and she was a writer and she just really instilled in me this love for reading and this interest in writing. and. I just can't remember a time when I wasn't interested or didn't think to myself that I was going to become a published author, which I still hope to do someday. I mean, I used to like buy composition notebooks and like in class pretend like I was taking notes in like middle school, high school, and I would just be like writing books. During the good old days, the wild, wild west days of the internet, I, I never, like, I never hear people talking about this website. Please, someone let me know if you know this website. Was anyone on Buddy for you? Come on. I, me and like my one best friend growing up were obsessed with Buddy for you. And I wrote on there all the time. <laughs> so like I was writing on Buddy for you. I was writing on Tumblr. I was writing on Wattpad. Oh, and on Miba. Miba, Miba.com. Was anyone on there? I was throwing my writing all over the internet back then. It was everywhere. That's a great question. I think I mostly fall into speculative fiction, like that realm. So like fantasy, sci-fi. Um, I've never actually written a sci-fi book. I would love to. I have a couple of sci-fi ideas, but I mostly write within the fantasy genre and I mostly do low fantasy, not high fantasy. So I say contemporary fantasy it can also be called urban fantasy. Anytime that you write about the real world with some sort of magical element. All of my stories usually have a magical, supernatural, or paranormal element set in a real world setting. I read pretty much a little bit of everything. 
I think if you looked at my stats for this year, I've probably read mostly YA fantasy, and that's because I've been reading a lot. I mean, I read the entire Grishaverse, so that has now taken up a lot of my reading time. <laughs> oh, and I read the Cruel Prince trilogy this year for the first time because I had never read it. So this year I've been reading a lot of YA fantasy series, and this was the year I challenged myself to like finish a lot of series that I had started or I've been wanting to read for a long time. I mostly read fantasy and sci-fi, but then I always like in between fantasy and sci-fi books, I need like a palate cleanser. So I will read a romance, contemporary, literary fiction, a mystery thriller. I really read everything except for memoirs. I feel like I'm not good at answering my favorite anything, like favorite artists, movies, books, anything. I am just not good because I just feel like it changes. And also it's like, what criteria? Is it a book that I'm always thinking about? Is it a book that I recommend to a ton of people? Is it a book that made me cry and feel something? If you were to ask me right now, like my top three favorite books are Bunny by Mono Wad. It is absolutely amazing. Mona Wad is such an amazing author. I think she's brilliant, brilliant. And as a creative writing major, this book just was everything to me. It was everything to me. And I'd probably have to say Ninth House by Lee Bardugo because I now love Lee Bardugo after reading everything. And I just think, I know that Ninth House and Bunny got mixed reviews, but I love them. I love them. I think Ninth House was so well written. It was so good. So, 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 so good. In terms of a series that I still think about to this day is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I was obsessed with it. Obsessed with An Ember in the Ashes. So I, I just read that last year for the first time. Still thinking about it. Still thinking about it. So I'll go with those. Bunny, Ninth House, and An Ember in the Ashes. I don't know. And actually, if I think about like my favorite fictional character of all time, it would have to come from a TV show and not a book. And it would be Adrian Monk from Monk. Yeah, I love Monk. He's a bit of a not nice guy all the time, but I love him and I love that show. I talked a little bit about this on my video where I talked about taking my idea into like a plot. And I get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest, but also music. Achilles Come Down by Gang of Youth, which is exactly why my main male character is has a placeholder name of Achilles because I cannot find a name that matches him. And I've just been calling him Achilles since I started this project. In the song, it is about a man, Achilles, who is about to jump off of the roof of a building and there's media everywhere and someone's behind him like pleading for him to not jump. Kind of like the, will you step down from this ledge, my friend, but like not upbeat. It's like a dark, moody, beautifully haunting song. And as I was listening to it, a question popped into my head of what if someone jumped knowing they would be okay? why would they jump? And that just spiraled me into this world for House of Stone. And that's actually where I start my prologue is Achilles jumping off a roof, knowing that he's gonna be okay. I could not get that image out of, that, out of my head. I had to write something about it. This is not my first full length manuscript. I've actually written three full-length manuscripts before. And this is a touchy subject for me. <laughs> so I said, I've said in a lot of my videos, this is the first time I'm writing or having like a writing practice in a very long time. I wrote three full manuscripts, full books. And like an idiot, let this be a cautionary tale. Okay, back up your work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. Back up your work, put it on Google Docs if you have to, okay? Put it somewhere that it will be safe. 
because like an idiot, post-college Michaela wrote everything in Microsoft Word, not Google Docs. And I didn't back it up. I didn't have any extra copies anywhere. Water got spilled on my laptop and my laptop died. And I lost all of it. Yeah. The moral of the story is back up your work <laughs> and don't suffer the downward spiral of depression I experienced after losing the only full length works I've ever written in my life. And it didn't make me want to read or write for two full years. It was a dark time. It was a very, very, very dark time. Okay, we can go back now. So this is actually my fourth attempt at writing a full length manuscript. I love this question. I've been trying to figure that out myself. From everything that I have already like planned out for my book, it seems the most similar to Jade City. It does have to do with, it's not like an alternate reality, like it is still in today's world, but big powerful family, organized crime, a magical drug, and magical jewels. So Similar, I feel like, to the Jade City trilogy, and I'm going to actually be starting that, I think, soon. I think some other books that have similar vibes is probably the City of Bones books because I think they're just a staple in the urban fantasy genre, um, minus, you know, the incest storyline. Yeah, that was rough. But City of Bones, I think, just for, like, someone falling into this magical world that has like opened up for them and they see the world completely differently now. And then probably The Magicians by Lev Grossman. So Jade City, The Magicians, and City of Bones. Obviously, first and foremost, I would love to be published. I've always wanted to be a published author. I feel more confident now than ever that I can actually reach it. I just feel like I'm in the best headspace I've ever been. And I'm just, I'm just ready to be a published author, I think. So that is my main goal, is to work towards publication. Of course, past that, I would love what I call the Sarah J. Mass treatment. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? I would love, like, I think every author dreams about, like, their future fan base, you know, who's, like, obsessed with their characters and wants merch of their characters and does fan art, fan art of your characters and you get like a movie or a TV show deal. So like, I would love like the Lee Bardugo or the Sarah J Mass treatment for sure. That'd be insane. Um, big goals, big goals. But I would ultimately love to be able to actually make money off of my writing and officially become a paid writer. Outside of novel writing, I, I have some other writing adjacent goals that I think are I don't know, maybe you guys will find it interesting, but I am working on writing two podcasts. One is investigative journalism and another is not, but scripts are being written. I don't know, if that's something that interests you, I could also be talking about that journey, but I've been writing two podcasts that I think would be really fun if I could get that off the ground. And I've also been writing a board game which has been really cool. I love tabletop board games and I just decided maybe I wanna make what I wanna play. Same with how I write what I want to read. Yeah, those are some fun writing goals. Ultimately, I just wanna be published. It's a toss up. If I am gonna go the traditional or the self-published route, I think I'm going to try my hands at the query trenches. Is it going to be with House of Stone? I don't know. I think that's gonna be determined at the end of the zero draft is how much work does it need to get to the querying stage? Probably a couple drafts, how long will that take? And then I would really need to look, unfortunately, at the market. Like, is it gonna be marketable? Do I think an agent's gonna want this? Do I think an editor is gonna pick this up? Um, and then I'll, I'll see. I'll probably see what happens in the query trenches. And if it doesn't lift off, then I think I'll make the decision, do I go the self-publishing route if I feel strongly in the story? 
or do I pick up my next idea? And I have like a million ideas sitting on the back burner, so I'm ready to get to them too. Um, I definitely struggle with that. I think what helps, and I, I kind of mentioned this, where like sometimes I don't write linearly. If I get stuck in a spot, which I usually did because I didn't do a chapter by chapter outline. So I'm hoping that I don't get as stuck because I know when I'm going to be writing every chapter. But if I get bored, I will probably do what I used to do, which is jump to a scene I'm excited about. And that has always helped me just like re-remember my love for the story and why I'm writing it. So yeah, like if I, if I get bored in the fun and game section, which I usually do get bored in the fun and game section, I might jump to like the ending and like some pivotal intense scene and write that out and remember what I'm working towards. So that has always helped me. The Six of Crows. I love the Six of Crows duology. I don't think it has affected my plotting for House of Stone at all, actually. Just because Six of Crows has so many points of view, and so the plotting is a bit different. Six of Crows has been validating for me to remember that like I can have characters make bad decisions and I can have characters who end up in a worse off spot in some areas and still have them be lovable. So I think that at least has been validating for me because my main character, <laughs> speaking of like character arcs and endings, is going to have a bitter ending. She's not gonna like where she ends up and it's because she made bad choices. Well, I'm making her make the bad choices, but she made bad choices. And it was just validating that I could still have a character make bad decisions, end up in a worse off spot, but still be loved because we as readers understand their motivations. I'm still figuring that out. I'm gonna be honest, motivation has been hard to find. I think 2020 really messed with me and it's hard to find motivation. I'm now motivated than ever though. I don't know if it's because I took a break, but I mean, starting this YouTube has helped. I feel like I'm holding myself accountable. I'm also just reminding myself that I have always wanted to be a published author, always. And that's not going to happen if I don't write. I can study and analyze story all I want, which is all I do all the time. And I love it and I'm obsessed with it. And I feel really comfortable, you know, breaking down craft ideas and analyzing story. But then I, I just have this like imposter syndrome when it comes to writing. But what has motivated me is reminding myself, you wanted this. Like you've been talking about this since you were a kid. You've wanted to be a published author. How do you do that? You write a book, you write a book, you edit the book, and you send it into the querying trenches. That's what we do. So that's what I'm doing, but I'm taking it a day at a time. I am doing a little bit more intense with this like, 2,000 words a day goal, which didn't land fully this week, but hopefully it will next week. But what motivates me is, I guess, just younger me. Younger me thinking of that moment where I become the published author, like how younger me would feel. Excited. I, I want that. I want it. I want a bat. If you've stuck with me this far, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you so much for just engaging with this content. It truly means the world to me. If you haven't subscribed and you've made it this far, come on, join us, join this writing community. And I would love to hear about what you're writing in the comments. And speaking of that, make sure you smash that like button. No, but really like if you could give a thumbs up, that would be great because it does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the YouTube gods to help people find this video. And as always, I really would love to hear your comments down below. Let's talk about your writing projects. Let's talk about what inspires you to write, what keeps you motivated in the hard parts. I'd love to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. No matter what, keep writing. Bye writers. Thank you.